Okay, so this is uh, going to be my review of the um, Homito V2 headset. Um, it comes with this case here um, that you see has a handle on it. Uh, nice sturdy case, zipper. Um, it's like a, I don't know what kind of material this really is. It isn't leather. <laughs> um, there's a, yeah, there's a zipper. It says Homito on the zipper. If that means anything to you, it also has a imprint of their logo right there. We open that up, and we have the headset in here. Uh, I have added some things into this that don't come with it, so um, just for convenience purposes. So here's the headset, um, has the capacitive button that, it, when I unboxed this, I didn't know how to press it. You press it like that. It doesn't always seem to work right though. It doesn't always press the, <laughs> the screen. So uh, sometimes I have a lot of trouble with that capacitive button um, when using this. Also, if you're using a case on a thicker phone, uh, which mine is kind of thick, uh, you can't, it won't stay closed. So you have to take the case off, so using this magnet system here which doesn't always work in every situation but it's strong enough that if your phone fits in uh, it's not going to fall open and even if it does come open like that these clamps here which you put your phone in uh, should hold it in place so it shouldn't fall out or anything like that and damage your phone okay so then we have up here we have the IPD and down here we is it no wait no that's the focus down here okay this is the focus adjustment this is the ipd down here so that uh that's that um the lenses are very sharp to the point where it, it's very hard to actually put it out of focus so um that's a good thing so you don't have to like push your screw your screen so far away from the uh, the lenses that you end up seeing the tops and the sides too much of the screen. You do see the sides on on my phone's a uh, well I'm recording with it right now, but it's I think it's 5.5 inches or something, and I see the sides just a bit. Um, if you have a bigger phone, you probably would be fine. Uh, the field of view is really good. Um, light bleed is not. A big issue here. Uh, I do notice it once in a while, a little bit, but it's not really. Uh, for the most part, you're kind of sealed in here. Uh, as far as comfort goes, this padding is very adequate. The nose room is very big, um, so I could wear this for hours without feeling any problems. As far as comfort goes, unlike the last headset, which I actually have over here for a comparison. Uh, the last headset was very uncomfortable to wear. Um, you will not see the other side of the screen from this lens or that lens either, so it won't create that weird effect where you have a line going down the middle of the screen or any weird artifacting looking effect thingies. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's very professional of me. Anyway, so uh, you can remove these straps. Showed this uh, in the unboxing, but you can remove these straps like that. So that's cool. I don't know what that would, I guess I could do something with that, but never have. Um, so let's see what else. Uh, so the, this, this is very important actually. The fact that I can have this open this far really helps. I found because if you have issues with uh, drifting and unlike the old, system here where we had this obnoxious clamp I'll show you so on this old headset we had this annoying clamp when you start your your app you have to like quickly shove the phone into the thing there was no way to line up the actual screen properly so um, and also this only worked with smaller phones this one works with bigger phones so that's a good thing too um, so yeah, that actually helps a lot with drifting. So if instead of like 
um, aggressively pushing your phone into the, the headset, which is what you had to do with this, that would throw the, the gyroscope out, out of whack and you would start drifting and stuff. That doesn't happen here. We have a very easy solution to putting your phone in. Um, and you can easily just put your phone in and close it and do that. Very easy, a lot better than the last one. This is a lot more comfortable than the last one. You'll see on the last one, the version one. I've done a lot of stuff to try to make it a comfortable experience to wear this, and it's really just, it's made it a little better, but it's not that great. It's very hard to wear, and just the nose area just cut, it just jams right into your friggin' skin, and that is not cool. <laughs> um, the lenses are not independently adjustable, and I, if you're wearing glasses, I'm sorry, that's not going to work because there's just not enough room between the lenses and your eyes. In fact, there's actually just enough room to put your eyes there, so it's, um, yeah, you're definitely not going to be wearing glasses with these. Uh, so if that's an issue for you, um, you're going to have to go elsewhere because um, these don't accommodate glasses, unfortunately. Um, they do, however, accommodate a virtual boy, so you can wear a virtual boy with, um, uh, yeah, stupidity. Um, no, but, uh, what else? So, yeah, we have that, 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 and that. This, uh, front case is actually clear. You can use, um, you know, it, it's, it's dark, but you can, you know, the camera can actually see through it. I even, uh, scanned a... QR code for this. The QR code for this is the same as the QR code for the old uh, Homido headset. So, so in the in the case, there's a place to put stuff. So if you have some things you want to put in here, it comes with an extra piece of foam to replace the old piece of foam with. I have this stylus here so that I when I need to select something on the screen, I don't touch it and get everything all smudged. I normally clean the screen every time I use it. Um, as far as like the, the lens is fogging up, it happens if the, if, if it gets cold and my, my face is not really that cold, it will fog up, but you can warm up, you kind of warm up the lenses. Somebody mentioned putting the, the thing on your head, uh, for a little while to warm it up. I've never done that and it just seems like a pain in the butt, but that's really, that's something that happens even with Oculus and all that. So there's not much you can do about that, but I don't have problems where I breathe and it fogs up the lenses, which, again, was an issue with this. Because the nose area is completely open and you could just shove your finger in there, also you could see light through there, um, it, you would breathe and the, the you, you would fog up the lenses on the inside. So this got very foggy for those reasons. Um... So, yeah, so what else, what else? Um, hmm. the no I think I mentioned this, but the nose room is very accommodating. It should fit your nose unless, you know, you're, you got this massive nose. Ha ha, you have a big ass nose. Ha ha ha. Okay, I'm done. Um... So, and there's this little thing on the back here. I don't know. Strap's fine. Don't have a problem with that. And uh, what else? What else? What else? What else do we have here? Um, yeah, it's definitely a really big field of view that you will get from this. You will get a really nice field of view. Um, I wouldn't say the price is... The greatest, <laughs> I mean, it's better. It's better than than a Gear VR as far as pricing goes, um, but yeah. So, um, so a couple other things that I've, um, I guess I'll I'll point out. I gotta be missing something important. A ventilation. Um, it's okay. The only time I ever had the the thing heat up so much that it shut down was because I accident I forgot I overclocked the CPU completely like I, I put it on performance mode so it, and then I started using VR applications and my phone got really hot and shut down but that was my fault so I really had any problems with overheating 
phone does get hot, but that my phone normally gets hot, so that's that's that. Um, and I was able to fit in um, my headset and things like that. Um, but I've seen people say that this is not enough room for certain headsets that they have. Or certain, yeah, headphones, by the way, not, not like this headset. Um, so that's that. Uh, so another thing is, uh, oh, I think I already pointed this out, but if the case isn't closing uh, and you have a case on your phone, you probably just want to take the case off your phone and put it in. Because, uh, yeah, it does cause some problems depending on the thickness of your phone. Which I kind of already said that, but... Um, now, what else? What was I going to get to? Oh, this is more of a convenience thing that I wanted to point out. There is an application, and I wish I had my phone to uh, you, show you, but I, I'm recording with it. But there's an app, application called MacroDroid. And there's another application called Full Dive. Full dive is very convenient for VR for cardboard. Um, basically, it's kind of like a cardboard launcher. Uh, a, yeah, it's like a an app that will allow you to launch your games and your your VR apps in VR instead of having to go through a folder with the touch screen and everything. And you can add different games and things and different uh, apps to it. And it also has YouTube support and a few other things. So it does more than just apps. And if you download that, you could then launch it and launch everything in VR. Uh, the only different, the only problem is some apps require that you touch the screen, and sometimes they have permissions and things, so you have to open it. But it kind of lessens the inconvenience of having to open the thing back up and you know select the select these options on the screen and and you know touch the screen all the time, which keeps your screen clean. It just makes things a little more convenient. Then there's MacroDroid which this is how I was using it for this. Um, basically, I made a macro and I uploaded it um, to their templates section where you can basically plug in a headset. The, he the, um, the headset... Now, the headset will launch... Um, will launch uh, Full Dive. So as soon as you plug in the headset, Full Dive launches and then you can close it up and uh, start using it in VR to try to kind of simulate the the way you get um, the way uh, what is it uh, the new VR system works um, except for they that works with NFC you could probably make an NFC uh, tag for that and get that to work but I don't know how to do that but Daydream to try to emulate Daydream with the with the uh, with the Daydream View headset. Uh, it basically just has an NFC tag and you put it in and it launches the app. This is kind of like I plug in my headset and then it launches um, full dive and then I can just put the headset on and start using it. Um, so that that's a cool thing. And then I have it set so then when I pull the, the uh, headset from there, um, basically the it, it goes back to the home screen so that I can just use the phone like normal and then if I'm using my music apps and I plug my headset in it won't launch full dive it's basically staying I plan on using my music apps so don't launch uh, full dive and then I can listen to my music so I did that um, that's set up with Google Play Music and a few media apps um, so I, you know, that just makes it a little more convenient, and it doesn't require root access either. So that's that. And uh, as far as it goes, um, so far I've not used a headset that's any better than this. But I, you know, I don't have access to every single headset. I'm not like a headset reviewing specific channel. There's a lot of people that review, do nothing but headset reviews. And so I don't know that I could say this is really worth the asking price. I'm sure you could probably find something fairly cheap that uh, is maybe close to this and just, you know, just worth worth the asking price. And, may, you know, this may not be as good. I don't know. Just 
it's hard to believe that this is actually worth the asking price. But I don't know, maybe. <laughs> I have uh, here the, what I've been using, and I wouldn't say it's better. Um, here it is, the Bobo. Uh, and that one, I would say, is not as good as the Homido, uh, unless you have to have these headphones. Um, they are equally as comfortable, um, but this is not going to work very well for smaller phones, and the lenses take a lot of adjustments to get to be clear. And they are very clear once you adjust them properly, but they're just not on par with the Homido's uh, lenses, and the field of view is nowhere near as good, uh, as convenient as it is with the headphones and everything. I would definitely say the Homido beats out the uh, the Bobo, um, but the Bobo is not bad for the price, so I don't know. Um, if you had the money to drop on it, I it's it's a good headset. It's a, definitely a great headset. Um, it even has some things over the Gear VR and things like that, from what I've heard. Um, so yeah. And then there's other headsets that are um, like the VR One, I believe, which is now like 130 or something dollars, and that one requires like, I mean, it's not very, doesn't seem to be too compatible with every phone. So, and I think it had some other issues um, that it was suffering from. But Homido's really good headset, uh, best headset I've ever owned uh, so far. But I don't know. Like I said, I, I think you probably may want to just go with some. It's probably something that's worth the price. And it may not be as good, but it'd probably just be good enough. So that's my review. And uh, thank you for watching. Uh, yeah, but I would say uh, definitely a huge step up from this monstrous piece of crap. Used to be good. Used to be really good. Not anymore. <laughs> uh, so don't buy that thing. Um, really, you can... I'd even say the Bobo's better. This is actually better than the old home, you know. Um, you can get something better than that stupid thing. <laughs> and it's more comfortable. So, uh, yeah. It's easy to wear for a long time. I don't know if I mentioned that. You can wear it for a really long time. I wore it for hours and it didn't have a problem. No weird VR face crap. So thank you for watching.